Dear students, welcome to the session on batch, fed batch and continuous fermentation. We know fermentation describes any process for the production of product by the mass culture of a microorganism and it includes both aerobic and anaerobic processes. Fermentation may be carried out as a batch or a continuous or a fed batch process. Batch growth or batch fermentation involves a closed system where all the nutrients are present at the start of the fermentation in a fixed volume. There may be further additions in a batch fermenter but it usually limit to acids or bases added for pH control or the addition of gases for aeration etc. Coming to batch fermentation, this is a closed culture system which contains an initial limited amount of nutrients. The microorganisms from the inoculum will pass through a number of phases such as a lag phase, log or logarithmic or exponential phase, stationary phase and death or decline phase as can be seen from the diagram. Up to the end of log phase is known as the trophophase and starting from the stationary phase is known as the idiophase. The production of growth associated products or primary metabolites occur during trophophase and the production of non-growth associated products or the secondary metabolites occur during the idiophase. Lag phase Lag phase occur immediately after inoculation where no apparent growth takes place and this phase is considered as a time of adaptation. The length of the phase, the length of the lag phase should be reduced as much as possible in a commercial process for it to be economical since log phase is a non-productive phase. Following lag phase, the logarithmic or log or exponential phase ensues. This is the period during which the growth rate of cells gradually increases. The cells grow at a constant and maximum rate possible. The exponential phase may be described as dx by dt is equal to mu x where x is the concentration of the microbial biomass, t is the time in hours and mu is the specific growth rate. The production of primary metabolites occur during the log phase and this phase is also known as the trophophase. Examples of primary metabolites are amino acids, nucleotides, vitamins, citric acid, acetic acid, ethanol, etc. Next is the stationary phase. The growth of the organism during the log phase will result in the consumption of nutrients and the excretion of microbial products. Thus, after a certain time, the growth rate of the culture decreases. This may be either due to the depletion of essential nutrients in the medium, also known as substrate limitation, or due to the accumulation of toxic products by the organism, which is also known as toxin limitation, or the decrease in growth may be due to both these factors. The nature of limitation of growth can be studied by growing the organism in the presence of different concentrations of substrate and plotting the biomass concentration at stationary phase against the initial substrate concentration. From such a graph as shown in the diagram, it can be seen that with an initial increase in substrate concentration, a proportional increase in the biomass occurs. This situation may be explained as x is equal to y multiplied by s minus sr, where x is the concentration of biomass produced, y is the yield factor, that is the gram biomass produced per substrate consumed, s is the initial substrate concentration and sr is the residual substrate concentration. 
the yield factor y is a measure of the efficiency of substrate conversion into biomass after stationary phase the death phase or the decline phase occurs the decrease in growth rate and the cessation of growth due to the depletion of substrate may be explained using monod equation The monod equation is mu is equal to mu max multiplied by s divided by ks plus s where s is a residual substrate concentration mu is a specific growth rate mu max is a maximum specific growth rate and ks is a substrate utilization constant ks is equal to the substrate concentration where mu is half mu max and ks is a measure of the affinity of organism towards the substrate the secondary metabolites are produced during the stationary phase and death phase and this phase is also known as the idiophase secondary metabolites are organic compounds that are not directly involved in the normal growth development or reproduction of an organism microbial secondary metabolites include antibiotics pigments toxins etc so what are the applications of batch fermentation batch fermentation may be used to produce biomass primary metabolites and secondary metabolites for biomass production cultural conditions supporting the fastest growth rate and maximum population should be used for primary metabolite production conditions to extend the exponential phase is used and for secondary metabolite production conditions giving a short exponential phase and an extended production phase will be used a batch fermentation possesses several disadvantages since several distinct stages are associated with the operation of a batch fermentation these stages are as follows filling the fermenter with fresh medium sterilization of the fermenter medium inoculation of the fermenter production of microbial products harvesting of biomass and spent broth and cleaning of the vessel since due to these different stages for a considerable period of time the fermenter vessel is not producing any microbial product but it is being cleaned filled sterilized etc this have serious major economic implications this non productive period is referred to as the downtime of the fermenter the downtime is very high for a batch fermenter fed batch fermentation a fed batch culture is a batch culture which is fed continuously or sequentially with medium and there is no removal of culture medium from the vessel it is established initially in a batch mode and then fed according to either one of the following strategies 
in the first strategy the same medium which is used to establish the culture is added and this will result in an increase in the volume of media in the second approach a solution of the limiting substrate at the same concentration as that present in the initial medium is added this will also result in an increase in the volume of the medium in the third strategy a concentrated solution of the limiting substrate is added this approach will also result in an increase in the volume of the fermenter the fourth strategy is that where a very concentrated solution of the limiting substrate is added this approach does not result in an increase in the volume of the media in the fermenter the fed batch systems employing the strategies 1 and 2 that is were either the same media or a solution of the limiting substrate in the same concentration as that of the original media are added these are known as variable volume fed batch system the system employing strategy 4 that is the addition of a very concentrated solution of the limiting substrate which results in no increase in the volume it is known as the fixed volume fed batch system the use of the strategy 3 were a concentrated solution of the limiting substrate is added it comes between intermediate between the variable and fixed volume systems continuous fermentation exponential growth in a batch culture may be prolonged by the addition of fresh medium to the vessel fresh medium is continuously added and an equal volume of spent fermentation growth and cells will be displaced exponential growth will proceed and steady state will be achieved that is formation of new biomass by the culture will be balanced by the loss of cells from the vessel the flow of medium into the vessel is related to the volume of the vessel by dilution rate d which is defined as d is equal to f by v where f is the flow rate and v is the volume of the vessel the net change in cell concentration over a time would be dx by dt is equal to growth minus output that is dx by dt is equal to mu x minus dx under steady state concentrations dx by dt will be zero there is no net increase in the cell biomass the formation of new biomass is balanced by the loss of cells from the vessel so the cell concentration remains constant and under steady state conditions so dx by dt will be zero then mu x is equal to dx mu is equal to d so under steady state concentrations the specific growth rate mu is equal to d the dilution rate so under steady state conditions the specific growth rate is controlled by the dilution rate up to a maximum value which is equal to mu max if the dilution rate is increased above mu max a complete wash out of the cells will occur as the cells have insufficient time to divide before being washed out of the reactor via the overflow the dilution rate at which this problem of wash out is just avoided is termed as the critical dilution rate d crit the controlling effect of the dilution rate on microbial growth can be explained by the monod equation we described before mu is equal to mu max multiplied by s divided by ks plus s where s is a residual substrate concentration mu is a specific growth rate mu max is a maximum specific growth rate and ks is the substrate utilization constant ks is equal to substrate concentration when mu is half that of mu max at steady state we said mu is equal to d so we can replace mu with d d is equal to mu max into s bar divided by ks plus s bar where 
S bar is the steady state concentration of substrate. S bar is equal to Ks multiplied by D divided by mu max minus D. So, we can see that the substrate concentration is influenced by the dilution rate. Thus, the bio biomass growth which depends upon the substrate concentration will depend upon the dilution rate. The growth of cells is controlled by the availability of a rate limiting nutrient. The system where the concentration of the rate limiting nutrient entering the system is fixed is termed as a chemostat. In a chemostat, the substrate concentration is held constant. The other type of continuous system is a turbidostat where nutrients in the medium are not limiting. In this case, Turbidity or absorbance of the culture is monitored and maintained at a constant value. So, here the cell concentration is held constant. So, the concentration of biomass varies in a chemostat while the concentration of biomass is constant in a turbidostat. We can describe the concentration of cells in a chemostat under steady state as x bar is equal to y multiplied by sr minus sr where x bar is a steady state cell concentration in the chemostat s capital r is a substrate concentration of inflow, inflowing medium s small r is the steady state residual substrate concentration present in the reactor and y is the yield factor therefore the biomass concentration under steady state conditions is controlled by the substrate feed concentration and the operating dilution rate. Let us look into the advantages and disadvantages of continuous fermentation. The downtime of a fermenter is much less and thus a continuous system is more economic when compared to the batch fermentation system. The continuous fermenter can be more easily automated, thus it requires less labor. But the chances of contamination and the loss of productivity of the microorganisms, otherwise known as strain deterioration, is higher in the case of continuous fermentation. The control operations in a continuous system are more complicated and there will be problems in the licensing of a continuous process product since it may not be always possible to trace a consignment of product to a batch of raw materials. This is due to the fact that in a long continuous process, several different batches of media will be used and thus associating a product with a batch of raw material will be impossible. So, there are three modes of fermentations which are used in various microbial fermentative productions. The choice of the mode of operation that is a batch or a fed batch or a continuous fermentation depends upon the product being produced. So we were discussing about batch, fed batch and continuous fermentations. Thank you so much for listening.